MK Ultra and the False Memory Syndrome Foundation. Dr. Martin T. Orn is an original board member of the False Memory Syndrome Foundation, the FMSF, as well as a senior CIA researcher at the University of Pennsylvania's Experimental Psychiatry Laboratory. The FMSF was created to deny the existence of cult mind control and child abuse and is staffed with psychiatrists connected to the CIA and their mind control experimentation. The phenomenon of children being coached or led to invent tales of abuse or make up such stories does exist, but comprises a small minority of the reported cases of child abuse, between 2 and 8 percent of all reported cases. One survey found 88 percent of therapists considered ritual child abuse a very real social problem. Only 5 percent of all child abuse cases ever enter the courtroom. Half of these end with the child returned to the custody of the abusive parent. Dr. Orne's research into hypnoprogramming at Cornell University in the 1960s was paid for by the Human Ecology Fund, which also funded some of Dr. Ewan Cameron's brainwashing and remote mind control experimentation. CIA-funded black psychiatry at that time specialized in electroshock lobotomies, drugging agents, incapacitants, hypnosis, sleep deprivation, and radio control of the brain. The FMSF founder, Dr. Ralph Underwager, and his wife openly advocate pedophilia, saying that it is God's will adults engage in sex with children. Underwager told a British reporter in 1994, quote, that scientific evidence proved 60% of all women molested as children believed the experience was good for them. Dr. Underwager is the world's foremost authority on false memory, but in court is repeatedly revealed as a charlatan. Numerous other members of the FMSF have connections to pedophilia, covert operations, and black psychiatry. Peter and Pamela Freyd, executive directors of the FMSF, have been accused of child abuse by their daughter, a professor of psychology at the University of Oregon. The industrial production of FMSF stories in journals, newspapers, and TV have shaped public opinion. The very concept of false memory serves the same purpose as Holocaust denial. The major crimes are obstructed. The accused wears the veil of a martyr, and the victim is reviled. Dr. Douglas Besheroff is director of the American Enterprise Institute and former director of the National Center of Child Abuse and Neglect. He writes articles that attack the victims of abuse and has been caught fabricating statistics when claiming scientific rationale for his claims. In 1986, Besheroff published Unfounded Allegations, A New Child Abuse Problem, and numerous other cover stories to confuse the issue. These individuals are engaged in a psychological warfare operation to cover up reports of the agency's mind control operations. For years, the CIA collaborated with cults, many of them founded by the government, in order to conceal the development of mind control technology. Dr. Besharov associated with Irving Kristol, a veteran CIA psychological warfare specialist. Ritual abuse skeptics with CIA connections are covering up the latest phase in CIA-sponsored mind control experimentation. The McMartin Preschool In preparation for the McMartin Preschool child abuse trial, 389 toddlers were interviewed. Nearly all of them described abuse at the preschool and do to this day. Some 80 percent had physical symptoms, including blunt force trauma of sexual areas, scarring, rectal bleeding, and sexual diseases. Paul and Shirley Eberly published the only two books available on the case, The Politics of Child Abuse, 1986. They achieved national status as child abuse experts. In courts of law, their work is frequently cited. They lecture widely to receptive audiences and have been speakers at a conference held by victims of child abuse laws, vocal. These two individuals ran an underground tabloid Finger in the 1970s. Finger delved heavily into sadomasochistic sex, sex with children, 
and sex acts involving human excrement. These two pedophiles seek to portray every abuser as a victim of mass hysteria, satanic panic, and witch hunts. They are just two of many. The parents of the McMartin preschoolers hired scientists and technicians who unearthed a series of underground tunnels beneath the school, confirming the children's testimony. The longest tunnel was 45 feet long and 6 feet below the school, with a 9-foot chamber spoken of by the children. Another branch led to the triplex next door, surfacing beneath a rollaway bathtub. Forensic tests on thousands of objects found at the site included 200 animal bones. The tunnels were dug in 1966, the year of the school's construction, by the father of the defendant, Charles Bucky. Bucky built the school and worked for Hughes Tool Company. There is an old adage, Hughes is the CIA. Pick it up and put it in this bag. That's right, and next will be a small, harmless snake. Pick it up behind the head. That's right. And put it in here. That's right. All the way, make sure it's in. That's right, and now there'll be a large snake, which you'll pick up behind the head. Behind the head. Quickly. Quickly. Let go. That's right, and your eyes are closing now, and you're sinking deeper. And as I ask you to open your eyes, eyes, you're going to be aware that there's a beaker in front of you. Do not touch the beaker. And there will be two other beakers also in front of you. You look at that. It's all right to open your eyes now. You'll see the beakers. Now I want you to focus on this beaker, because shortly I'll ask you to do something. This beaker, you want to be careful of because it is filled with acid. It is nitric acid. You've had chemistry, haven't you? And you know that nitric acid dissolves copper. I'm going to put a penny into the acid. Look what happens. Now I want you to reach in with your hand and pick up the penny out of the acid and put it into this beaker. Take it very quickly. Go ahead. Put it in there. That's right. Just put your whole hand and close your eyes. Nothing else at all. Nothing else at all. Only my voice. Nothing else at all. That's right. That's right. All right. Now I want you to put your hand in this beaker. That's right. Only my voice. Nothing else at all. That's right. Now, when you open your eyes, you're going to be aware that the beaker is still there in front of you. But beside you, you'll be aware that there's a man who's been responsible for all of the nuisance today, all of the discomfort. And you're going to become more and more annoyed at him as you think about that. In fact, you're going to take, pick up the beaker and throw the contents right at him. You're going to take the beaker and you'll feel good doing that. All right, and you'll do it quickly. Open your eyes, you'll see the beak in front of you. Pick it up and throw it at it. Throw it at it. That's it. As you saw, we changed the acid for colored water while the subject's eyes were closed. The subject not only couldn't see this, but wasn't really aware of it because the smell of the acid was strong enough in the area to be quite compelling. Yet she threw the acid, what she thought was acid, at someone else. But in the same token, she picked up the rattlesnake and she was willing to take a penny out of the fuming acid. The reason why you, she did it, however, was not so much the fact that she was hypnotized, but the fact that she knew that I couldn't afford to have anybody be hurt and I wouldn't want anybody to be hurt. And for that reason, she trusted me. And it was the trust that mattered. I decided that I liked Anton LaVey. He was a pleasant man. He believed in what he was doing. And underneath his uh, somewhat Mardi Gras exterior, I sensed that there was an individual who 
uh, did in fact have a new perspective on the human equation, on what humanity is.